Good evening, Northwest Arkansas. This is New Song Church. I am CJ Brummett, lead pastor here. We are excited that you have joined us tonight. And I want to just encourage you that if you're at home and listen, there can be distractions at home, but we have prayed and prepared for you to encounter God in all the house churches across Northwest Arkansas. Everyone who is tuning in right now, we have prayed and believe and know that God is going to change lives tonight. So if you're in desperate need of God's intervention in your life in any way, whether it be healing, whether it be through uh, the word of God speaking into your life, tonight we have prayed that you'll receive in Jesus' name. I want to just cover a couple of things. Number one is please go at some point tonight to our website, visitnewsong.com. If you will go to the ministries tab on the main menu and you'll drop that down, the very first selection is New Song Events. Go to the event tonight, the Wednesday night prayer encounter, and double click on that. Follow the instructions in that event, and we want to send you, if this is your first time joining us tonight, we want to send you a free gift from us just to welcome you as a first time guest online to New Song Church. Also, while you're there on the website for all of those, whether you're a first time guest or not, there is a tab for Easter. I'm just going to tell you Easter's proceeding no matter what the situation. We are going to, uh, to believe that God is going to change lives through Easter. And so we have alternate plans depending on what the situation is. So don't think that Easter egg hunts are done. I know that's not the, the spiritual focus of Easter. That is the resurrection of Jesus. But listen, we are concerned and love your kids. We want to make sure that this Easter is special for them too. So please don't think that anything's canceled. It's just may be different so join us but go on there and find we are still looking for our folks if you're part of new song church uh, we are still looking for more donations and candy and you'll find links on the easter tab down at the bottom of the types of candy we're looking for so it makes it easy for you to order you can have it sent to the church if you don't want to mess with that you can donate towards it but there's options so I'm going to challenge you as we're making changes to our website to better minister to you and stay connected during this time that we are not having church in person. The website will be a good hub for you to go to to know what's going on. But always, you can call us. Uh, you'll find information on how to reach us there. Email us. Connect with us on Facebook. But however we connect, let's stay connected and just believe that God is going to do a mighty work in us even during this time of, of challenging times for the church to meet. We love you and we're praying as we get ready to worship that you will worship with us. Let's join together and I'm gonna challenge the kids because many times the kids, if you're in the living room kids, you can stand up, you can raise your hands, you can respond, but we just pray that the whole family will join us now in worshiping. We love you, God bless you, let's worship. Come on, right where you are, lift your hands up to him. Heavenly Father, we bless you. We honor you tonight. Jesus, you're our King of kings, our Lord of lords. And tonight is all about you. You're our way maker. When there seems to be no way, you make a way. And we bless you. You are here. Moving in our midst, I worship you. I worship you. Come on, sing it out. You're here. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship. Come on, just encounter him there where you are. You are here. You're moving in our midst. I worship you, I worship you, you are here, you are here, you're working in this place, I worship you, I worship you, come on sing that out one more time, you are here, you are here, you're moving in our midst, I worship you, I worship you. Call you, waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. 
touching every life. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you, I worship you, come on sing that to him, you're here, you are here, you're touching every life, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, you are here, you're meeting every need, I worship you, I worship you. We call you Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, Light in the Darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, Light in the Darkness, my God, that is who you are. That is that is who you are. 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 There is not none like you. Who can know my heart like you do? For all creation sings your song. I will join with them, declaring your glory. Let's do that. There is not none.
tonight. Humbly I stand and all free. With open hands, Lord, I on you, Father, you take care of it all. You take care of everything, Father. We can trust in you. Dear Father God, so many times this week, I, I've thought of the story of, of, of Peter and when you walked on the water and you called for him to step out of the boat. Many of us are going through a, a time right now and our lives are being turned upside down. Our, our, our children, our schoolwork, our, our college students, workers being displaced, all kinds of chaos going on in our lives. And you're asking us to trust you. And sometimes that requires us being willing to step out of the boat, to take a step of faith to get out there and see what you can do through us and how you can show yourself faithful, how you can show yourself trustworthy in the way that your word says you are. Father God, faith is, faith is easy until we have to use it, until we have to take that step out of the boat. That's when faith gets real. 
So God, I pray that you just impress upon our heart, dear Father God, that we can trust you wholeheartedly. We can put our faith in you. And no matter what our circumstances look like with our physical eyes, dear Father God, you are the final word. It is only you that we need to trust and depend on. You will guide us through. You will walk us through. You never leave us or forsake us, God. I thank you for that. Praise God, praise God. We're gonna continue right now in our, in our time of worship with sharing communion together. And I know some of you may be at home and you're like, communion, how do I do communion? Well, Pastor CJ sent out a message earlier, just, you know, it doesn't matter what elements you use. It doesn't matter if you're drinking a glass of milk and, you know, and some cookies, I don't know. That's not what is important. The important aspect is you're using something to symbolize the elements in communion and you're partaking of communion and what it celebrates and what it remembers. And as we get ready to do this, I just want you to take a moment, CJ, if you would. I just want you to take a moment. Communion is an opportunity for us to look and reflect and remember and reflect on what Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ did for us. What our Father in heaven in his infinite wisdom did so that we could come into relationship with him. And I'm gonna have to sit this here so I can read scripture. I can't do this with three hands. And I wanna just real quickly go to the scripture in, in Corinthians when Paul was sharing with them what it meant. And it says this in verse 13 of chapter 11 of 1 Corinthians, it says, uh, I'm sorry, 23, my, I need new glasses. It says, for I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord. We don't need to go on that one. But, um, the idea is when we drink of the cup and we take of the bread, we are remembering that what they stood for. When we take the bread, we remember that it was God's body that was, or Jesus' body that was broken for us. He took upon himself what our sin deserved. He was beaten, he was bruised, he was spit upon, he was humiliated. He was broken, bleeding. And he did that because that's what sin deserved. It's not what he deserved, but it's what sin deserved. So as we have the elements, let's take the bread, let's just pray over it. Father God, I thank you that this evening as we take our communion, we hold this bread that symbolizes the body of Jesus Christ that was broken and bruised for us. And God, we thank you that you made a way, that your son was willing to take upon himself the punishment that our sin deserved. A burden that we could not handle, a burden we could not carry, and a debt we could not pay. God, we right now, as we hold this element, we thank you for your son and his body that was broken for us. Let's partake the bread together. And then we hold the cup, which symbolizes Jesus' blood. You know, in God's infinite wisdom, he knew there was one way for there was sacrifice to be made that would be good once and for all. Instead of us having to have a priest go before the Lord's presence and sacrifice an animal year after year to atone for our sins for that period of time, he took his son, Jesus Christ, and his blood was spilt on Calvary so that our sins could be atoned for forever. That we could be made righteous in our Lord's eyes. 
It's a precious, precious gift that he's given us. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, as we hold this cup, we hold the element, the juice that represents the blood of Jesus Christ that was spilled for us. A sacrifice once and for all that we can be made righteous in your eyes. A, a blood that was spilled that makes us white as snow. Forgiveness of our sins, Father God. It makes it possible for us to be in relationship with you, Father God. And we thank you for it, Lord. And tonight we remember what Jesus did for us. And we're humbled by it, that great, great love that you have for us. In Jesus' name, let's partake of the cup. Just take a moment just to reflect. Hallelujah. Father God, thank you for all that you are. Thank you for loving us enough and wanting to have a relationship with us so much that you're willing to sacrifice your son for us. Thank you for that great love. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Well, one more thing before Pastor CJ comes with the word tonight. We want to continue our, our worship in giving tonight. And, you know, I know we're, we're disconnected in a lot of ways, but we're connected by a, by a video right now. And technology is a great thing. And, and some of you might be out there saying, I don't like technology. Well, some of us are kind of having to learn to like it because we don't have any other choice right now. But, you know, one of the great things we can, we can do our tithes and our offering uh, in a lot of different ways. If you're out there, you can still give your tithes and our offering by mailing us to the church at 1690 Gamble Road right here in Centerton. Or you can go on our website, you can go to our, our giving site, you can give through PayPal if you have a PayPal account and that's the best way for you. Or you can give through our website with Give Plus, which is our new giving platform. And with Give Plus, we also have a mobile app. Uh, you can download the mobile app and give that way. Or even if you're you know, out and about, you can even give by a text. So I wanna encourage you, go on our website, look at all those different things. There's instructions on how to do it. And I would encourage you right now, I'm gonna pray over our offering. I'm gonna encourage you to do that right now. If you have tithes and offerings that you wanna give, do it right now as we pray, amen? God, we thank you that you are so faithful. And God, as we've said the last few, the last few uh, services, we are going to test you, like your word says, that when we give and we give our tithes, when we bring that tithe into the storehouse, Father God, we are entering into a covenant with you. And God, it's amazing when we give that tithe and we enter into that covenant, it's amazing what you can do with the other 90% so much greater than if we take it all for ourselves. So God, we wanna come under that blessing and I pray that right now, God, that we give cheerfully, we give out a heart of gratitude and thankfulness for that you are our Jehovah Jireh, our Jehovah Jireh and you are our provider. And God, we give to you tonight, Father, for you to be able to continue the work of the Lord in our community and around the world through churches all over this, all over this country, all over this world. God, we thank you for it in Jesus' name, amen. Bless you all. Pastor CJ is going to come. Thank you, Pastor Darren, for leading us both in communion and in our worship and giving. I, I just want to challenge you, if you have any difficulty in using the online giving, since we do have some new options, feel free to always contact uh, the church office during the week at 479-224-4988. Uh, or you can email us at info at visitnewsong.com. Uh, we want to help you in that as well. I'm excited because the Lord has given me uh, direction in the message for tonight for you. Um, I also want to encourage y'all that every Wednesday night we take communion. It's something that we do to ensure that we are always remembering the sacrifice of the Lord. So if you're joining for the first time tonight and you didn't know that we were doing that, you maybe aren't on Facebook, you're watching our website just know that you don't have to have juice, you don't have to have a cracker, but whatever you use at home, as Pastor Darren also uh, referenced, you can join with us. So next, next week you'll be pre prepared for that. Uh, also, if you're watching from home and you have folks there worshiping with you, uh, you can snap a picture, you can take some video, you can send it to us uh, through our email at info at visitnewsong.com or send it to us through Messenger. But we'd love to share in the joy of your worship encounter, your prayer encounter tonight. Well, I am thankful uh, that the Lord has given us uh, this time together. And excuse me while I grab my stand here. 
We've been hearing all week from folks that are connected here at New Song that everybody is starting to really miss each other, the face-to-face. So uh, listen, we're praying for creativity. We're believing that God is going to lead us in some creative ways to be able to connect uh, in the coming week and weeks. So stay tuned. Keep an eye on our website and our Facebook page uh, for information for ways to connect. Well, I want to just stop for a moment and say that I'm sure myself, like many of you and those watching out there, that one thing's for sure for all of us that are listening in tonight is that we have now become more mindful more than ever that life is full of surprises. Life is full of surprises. Maybe that's not the word you'd like to use for this situation that we're in right now. Maybe surprises isn't it. Um, but life is full of surprises. I've, I've heard the story of a, a gentleman who said that uh, his wife and him, after they had been married for decades and, and had a joyful, happy marriage, uh, a younger married couple said, what is the secret to your marriage? And he said, well, at the very beginning, my wife and I decided that I would make all the major decisions and she would make all the minor decisions. And he said, in 40 years of marriage, I can say happily that I've never had to make a major decision. We set out with plans. We set out to figure out how we're going to approach life and marriage and work and all of that. And at the end of it all, we get surprised by unexpected times. I've come to realize my life that the Holy Spirit is as much in the detours of life as he is in our carefully laid plans. The title of the message tonight is Divine Detours, Divine Detours. We folks are in a detour for sure. Our lives feel as if it's been deterred from the direction we were headed. Two passages in the New Testament demonstrate the truth of this insight. But I will tell you that while we may see a detour and think that detours are always unexpected for God they are not the New Testament detours that we see is one I would define in two words ships and sickness ships and sickness where that comes from is in the book of Acts chapter 13 it records the beginning of Barnabas and Saul's missionary journey at first it appears the journey was a detour until you look further and study the map. This map of the ancient harbor of Seleucia from which Barnabas and Saul set sail, looking out to sea from Seleucia, those two didn't sail towards uh, where, where we think they were because it was all planned. But the majority of where their first missionary labors occurred, I would say, was just because they took the first ship available heading out. When you really look at what they set out to do and the path they took, it seems at first sight that for them to head northwest to Perga, then go out to southwest, southwest to Cyprus, that, that we could think of some more direct routes when we look at where they ended up. Why did they take an unexpected route? I suspect they didn't have a planned itinerary. Again, I suspect that they just caught whatever ship was sailing and the next one was going to Cyprus. Effectively, it was a detour. But because of that detour, the Roman uh, proconsul Sergius Pallas came to Christ. And an influential person in that city, in that area, in that province, they came to Christ because of that detour. Ultimately, they made it to what is now the Turkish mainland. And they headed up the coast to the highlands. Their itinerary evidently was directed by illness because we know in Galatians chapter 4, verse 13, for Paul later says, as you know, it was because of an illness that I first preached the gospel to you. It was because of an illness that shaped the course for Paul. None of us made a New Year's resolution this year, I am certain, that we will be directed by illness this year. 
None of us made a plan this year that by a major illness, a pandemic, a worldwide pandemic, that we would change our plans that we set out to make. But even illness like Paul can take us to unprecedented places, to unintended methods of doing life, to unprecedented times, unintended places. These places where for believers we end up ministering to people we never intended to. Through detours we never would have predicted. Another example I would I would use three words, storm at sea. Storm at sea. The second incident is in Mark chapter 4, the storm at sea. And look with me to understand this unintended nature of the trip. Jesus had been at the northwest corner of the Sea of Galilee when he said, let us go over to the other side in Mark chapter 4, verse 35. Now, you have to understand who Jesus was talking to and the disciples and where their homes that they were from were located because it is reasonable to assume that the disciples thought the other side meant Bethsaida. Bethsaida on the northwest corner of the sea, which was home to five of the disciples. Why wouldn't they think that when Jesus said, let's go to the other side? All right, finally rest. We know in in accounts that there was a, a press to try to get it from the crowds, that it was weary and tiresome, but they were ministering to many and the crowds would follow. So why would they not think, obviously Jesus is saying, let's just go to the other side back home. Never would they have thought of heading on a boat towards Gentile territory to meet a demon possessed man. But the storm blew them to an unintended place. The, new, the Lord knew where they were going, but they did not. Detours in your life, it's the same with us. The Lord knows where you are and and knows where you're going to end up. And on, on the other side of this detour that's caused by this coronavirus, he knows already. But we don't. It's because of that truth right there that Jesus knows, God knows, the Lord knows what's on the other side of this detour and we don't, but it's because of that truth right there that I can say with confidence and with boldness and say with certainty that God is in the detours. These are divine detours. God doesn't cause pandemics, but he uses those detours to place us in the right place at the right time for the people that he intends to change their lives. His word teaches us to be certain of this, that I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow, and his name is Jesus. His word teaches us to be certain of this, that don't worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow will worry about itself. I want to tell you a little funny story. Jennifer and I and the kids recently needed to get outside while the weather was nice, and so we headed out to the park in Centerton, Arkansas, over by where they're building the new Wendy's, and there's that creek that runs down, turns into a larger creek, but there's a lot of rocks. And my boys wanted to do a little adventure of searching for gold or whatever they could find in the creek, and Lily Jean was picking uh, green onions. She was picking these, uh, which ended up stinking up my car, but these were powerfully strong wild onions. And she had a clump of them, and we're getting pictures of that. But an interesting little thing, this little bird started squawking and flapping its wings at her, and when she'd stand up, that bird realized that it was too much for him, and it would trot off the other way. But as soon as she would return down and squat down and start pulling those onions, that bird would come back just a squawking, just a squawking at her. And we... We were trying, and my phone wouldn't get video. You know how we are. It's got to all go online, right? You can't, just, you can't just love the moment. But I was, oh, man, it says I don't have enough memory because I've been doing all these videos for church, right, on my phone. And so we're just watching, and, and it went on and on. And this bird, finally a little friend of the bird came along. And you know the scripture that tells us don't worry for tomorrow because tomorrow will worry about itself also tells us that if God is concerned about the birds of the air, That little bird was concerned about whatever Lily was doing and had concern for its future, but God says not even the birds of the air have to worry. 
Not even the fields have to worry being without onions for us to eat. No, it says without, look how the beauty of the flowers. You know, a couple days recently, I've been able to have a few in-person meetings with social distancing, and we've sat out front of the church where our Japanese maples are blooming with these beautiful blooms that were first pink, and as they get full, they're turning more white. So we sat out there in the nice breeze as I had a meeting today, and I'm thinking about the beauty. And then in the evenings, we have our beautifully positioned at New Song where we have a, a sunset, it seems like almost all the time, bouncing off the building, and you can go out and especially on Wednesday night prayer encounters, we get to enjoy a beautiful sunset many times as, as we're approaching spring coming in. And so I may not be certain about what tomorrow holds. I know who holds tomorrow, but I also know that I don't need to worry about tomorrow because when I look at the beauty of that sunset, when I look at the beauty of those blooms, when I see that little bird that's all worried, but I know that God is watching over even the sparrow, then I know that I don't need to worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. His word, I am certain, also because his word teaches. I am certain that I don't have to worry about tomorrow because his word teaches in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verses 10 through 15 says, don't say, why were the former days better than these? Why did this happen to ha have to happen to us, the coronavirus? Why couldn't we just have kept going like we're going? It says, don't say, why were the former days better than these, since it is not wise of you to ask this. Wisdom is as good as an inheritance. You know, today in my meeting that's outside, I was asked, what would you like me to pray for, Pastor? If I prayed for you, what would you like to? And some of you know or catch it on that the only thing I ask of anyone to pray for me is give me wisdom, God, to do what you've called me to do. Because in Scripture, I saw God's response to King Solomon that if he would just ask God to help him to accomplish what God has asked him to do, there was nothing else to worry about. And God opened up the floodgates and brought blessings on top of the wisdom. Not wisdom to just be smarter than the other person. Wisdom to do what God has called us to do. Verse 11 says, wisdom as is, is as good as an inheritance and an advantage to those who see the sun. Verse 12, because wisdom is protection as money is protection. It's saying, listen, you find your protection in money, but God's saying his wisdom will be protection. And the advantage of knowledge, that is, that is that wisdom preserves the life of its owner. Wisdom preser preserves the life. Wisdom from God preserves the life of its owner. Verse 13, consider the work of God for who can straighten out what he has made crooked? Who in this world, if God's intention is to take this time we're going through this terrible time and to turn something beautiful out of it to turn it around who, who could take and try to change God's plan no one and listen to what this last verse says verse 14 in the day of prosperity be joyful but in the day of adversity consider this God has made the day of prosperity as well as the day of adversity some will say God has made one as well as he's made the other we know from another text, he's made the, the rain, to, it rains on the just and the unjust. Don't be surprised, those who are listening out there and those who are sitting in here with our team tonight, don't be surprised if somewhere during this pandemic, before it ends, it, it, if something, something amazingly good and blessed comes out of this for you, don't be surprised. Because if you serve the God the one true God, if you serve God, if you have Jesus in your heart, he is turning things around for you. And listen, if you don't, God is working very diligently to draw you unto him that you might also receive his wisdom so that he can pull you out of the mess that you're in. Our lives' itineraries are in God's hands. Think about all the people who have set plans to fly. Some who are from other countries who set out to, I'm going to get home where I have uh, some familiarity and I know how to handle these kind of situations or at least I know where my resources are. And, and those best laid plans, they never would have thought that travel would be shut down. In major cities, you know, I've heard people say, could they really shut down a city? Because in these unprecedented times, our best laid plans 
no matter how much we put into them, are powerless. But God is not. If you find yourself in an unintended place with unintended people doing unintended ministry, know that this is what the Lord intends for you and he will be right there with you every step of the way. And let me speak to those that maybe you aren't connected with any church and you're seeking. Listen, when you're in the grocery store and someone comes up and says God loves you, don't take that as a trite statement. They, they may be saying it to a lot of people. Don't think when people say I, I love you and they're Christian like you have to say that. Listen, God's love is powerful and I have found that I am a selfish person without him. I am nothing but self-centered, self-focused without him. It is only by his grace, his power, him changing my life that I am able to even have the love for people that I don't even know. But as I walk through the grocery stores, as I go to the gas station, I look around and I see people who this is uh, causing fear in their lives, that their children are afraid and my heart breaks for them. It's the compassion of Christ that does that. G. Campbell Morgan was a profound British preacher whose four sons all became pastors and he influenced millions with his preaching, teaching, and writing. And when Campbell Morgan was leaving home, his father hugged him, shook his hand, and handed him a small folded piece of paper. And in that piece of paper, the sum of advice from this this man, his father, said this, Quoting God's word, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Proverbs, our our focus text for tonight, Proverbs chapter three, verses five and six says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. So listen, this verse suggests how to find God's will for your life, God's direction for your life, God's clarity the clear path. So tonight you're gonna leave this message with five key words. If you're taking notes, write these down to draw your attention back to God's word. Let them be reminders. The first key word for you to write down, remember, is trust. This text says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. The word trust in Hebrew means to lean with full body, to rest with full weight upon In our thinking, the word trust means to rely upon or to have confidence in, but the Hebrew word means more than confidence in. It means to rest your whole weight upon the Lord. I think about the demonstration that goes way back, probably now a couple decades back, a a trust exercise. Remember the one where the person would stand here and the, the leader would stand behind them and the person over here is supposed to fully trust and fall backwards? Listen, I've seen some of those go wrong. I've seen some go really wrong. We're we're in a prayer encounter tonight and some of those turned into a prayer encounter not because it was intended, because it was needed. But that's the idea of this Hebrew word here. It's not just I'm, I'm, I'm leaning on something, taking a little rest. It's fully, fully all your weight putting on on Christ, trusting, leaning. The first key word was trust. The second key word was, if you remember, is to lean, lean on your own, uh, lean not on your own understanding, lean not on your own understanding. To lean means to rest upon something for partial support. Leaning is what you do when you walk with a cane or hold on to a walker because you're unsteady. You lean on something. This is more in the case of a prosthetic where without God, you have nothing to stand on. First key word was trust. Second key word, lean. The third key word for you to write down and remember is understanding. Lean not on your own understanding. This refers to the mental process by which you analyze a problem. Break it down into smaller parts so that you can think through it and and then make a decision about what you're gonna do. And I find myself many times in my weakness laying awake at night after dealing with a troublesome situation and start to unpack that piece by piece and analyze and think, how can I 
how can I change this situation for these people? Or how can I change this situation for myself? And this is saying, no, this is what you would want to do in the natural is lean on your own understanding, but don't do it. The text adding in the description of what our understanding is not good for, and it says our understanding is not good for trusting and leaning. It means, yes, use all your mental power, use the wisdom God's given you, but don't lean on your own understanding for total support. You'll fall. What does that look like? That means that pray first. When you're faced with a difficult situation, when there is a pandemic of any kind in your life, when it seems like it's infected every area in the corner of your life and it's spreading quick, pray first. Go to God and say, listen, God, I, I've been doing things my own way and it's coming apart, leaning on my own understanding, trying to figure all this out and do it myself and I need your wisdom, I need you, I need to lean on your understanding, not mine. So trust, lean, understand. The fourth key word is acknowledge. In all your ways, acknowledge him. The Hebrew word here means to know deeply and intimately by personal experience. It means to know something through and through. Now we know the president of the United States, but how many really know him on a personal, very personal basis you know it, it's the wife of the leader who is in the background that hears as the husband unpacks the things that he can't say to all the people because he's got to be strong as a leader and so he, he tells his most intimate details to his wife of his struggles and when she hears that the way God's made her or maybe it's a leader who is a woman and it's her husband that she is pouring this into and they come to a moment where the spouse becomes very defensive because they understand in a more intimate way what their spouse is going through. And when people are putting unfair expectations on them or people are, are being cruel or people are not understanding the weight and, they, and they're just throwing out insults, it's that spouse that says, but you don't really know them like I know them. When we know God in an intimate way and the question gets posed, where is God in this pandemic? For the believer, they say, if you really know him like I know him in an intimate way, he's in the midst of it. This is a detour, but not for God. This is a detour for us, yes. And especially if we've been depending on ourselves and not following after Jesus and we, we're not ready in any way for this. It's a detour, but not for God. My wife and I ha have been married over 15 years. And the longer you're married, stranger things happen. Good but strange. I mean, I'll be sitting in the car thinking about someone in our church body or a friend who I, I just sense that there's something going on. I need to reach out to them. And my wife will also bring up their name. I'll be like, what? I was just thinking about them. I mean, how does that happen? In the natural. You know, people out there that don't believe in God, they're like, oh, ESP, I knew it was real. Listen, we have to take the foil hats off and realize that when we see those sunsets, we see those blooms, we see the birds, we see all God's created, that he is very much involved in our lives and even directing our thoughts at times, not controlling, but directing that when these detours happen, he says, yeah, but I'm turning it into a straight path. See, me and my wife will think of the same person at the same time and begin to intercede for them because we are a vessel. We are becoming a vessel of, of this supernatural understanding, not of our own, but of God's. And his understanding is flowing through us, his wisdom, answering our prayers for wisdom. And so we begin to lean not on our understanding, but on his. Seen in that light, with that explanation from the scripture, we might translate verse five this way. In all, of, in all your ways, know God intimately, deeply, personally. When you know God that way in every area of your life, he will direct your paths. So the first key word, trust. The second, lean. The third, understanding. The fourth, acknowledge. And the fifth and final key word for you to write down and remember is direct. He will make your paths straight, 
the verse says. The ESV, the English Standard Version says, that translation says a little better, I believe, he will make straight your paths. He will make straight. When your paths are crooked, when it's a detour and it feels like everything's a mess like it does right now for many, he will make your path straight. Life's journey is like a road. If you travel, if you're from Arkansas, if you're watching outside of Arkansas, you may not relate to this, but there is a road that at one time I think was considered the most, one of the 10 most dangerous roads in the U.S. And it was the road from Rogers, Arkansas to Eureka Springs. And I can't for the life of me remember the highway now. Some of you are calling it out. But all the years, the I guess going on 30 years or something that I've ridden motorcycles, there are some deep grooves in the pavement from my pegs of my motorcycle getting a little bit too rambunctious in my earlier days and seeing how far I could lean over in those curves. And there's been a few times where I got up to the side of a curve where it's a 300-foot drop and hitting the brakes hard because I got a little bit overconfident and about went over the edge. But when I travel that road now as an adult with my kids, number one, I think, I hope they never do that. But I'll see some of those, and maybe I don't know which one's mine and which one's someone else, but I always think, I remember that moment when that path was so crooked and I was going at it so hard that I just about ended everything. And those beautiful kids that are sitting in the back, God, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your grace when my path was so crooked that I was headed for destruction. Thank you that you got my mind right. I kept riding motorcycles for years after that, but I got a little more wisdom. Life's journey is like a road. The road winds through the mountains down into the swamps of life. It seems like a thousand switchbacks in motorcycle terminology. Those are the ones where it goes one way and the other way and back the other way. Some parts are washed out. In Arkansas, we have a lot of low water or high water bridges, low water bridges, whatever people call them, but they, they're where you can drive through and tell that it rains real hard and then it's impassable. And others still seem to be dead ends. I remember driving, I have a very large extended uh, 1995 Ford diesel truck that we call the Cowboy Cadillac. And it's got a cattle guard and it's full four doors within a big flatbed. And I was out, way out in Eagle Rock, Missouri and decided to take a trip into town for something and took a wrong turn from what I saw on the GPS and I ended up down this road where I couldn't even find out how I was gonna back up and turn around. I hit a dead end that went out into the wilderness and I couldn't even at first figure out how I was going to get, I must have backed up a half a mile until I figured a little spot I could get that big beast turned around. Life can be like that. We've headed so far down a path we've not realized that we've got ourselves in a mess and we're thinking, I can't even back up now. I'd have to go so far backwards to even get myself out of this mess, I can't seem to figure out what I'm going to do. Proverbs chapter three, verses five and six, the message is, if you commune with God, he'll make your path clear. I'm not saying you won't have trials, but I'm saying that he will lead you in such a way that he always gives you the way of escape. If you listen to Sunday's message, we talked about that Jesus is also a way of escape. He always gives us a way to escape. He will remove the obstacles if they need to be removed. He will fill the potholes if they need to be filled. He will redirect, redirect the detour. So if that's what it seems to be as a dead end for you, it turns out that God has not given you the dead end, but he will give you the way out. And his way out turns out to be the shortest way to reach your destination. All of you within the sound of my voice watching online tonight and our team that's here tonight, we've all been deterred from the comfort of our lives. We've all been deterred from the mundane and, and we can't even at this point, because it seems like such a negative, we can't even see that God has shaken us loose to where we can get some clarity right now from him. There's still so much that's uncertain, so it's hard to see the positive in this, but some would say there's no end to this detour. Nothing in sight right now anyway. We may be on a detour, D-E-T-O-U-R, 
But God is not deterred. D-E-T-U-R-E-D. He is not redirected. God is not turned around. He has not set a different path. In fact, when we look at the definition of that deterred, it says, discouraged from doing something through doubt or fear of the consequences. God is not discouraged by this pandemic. God is not afraid of this pandemic. And God is not deterred by this pandemic. I'm going to pray for you, those that are watching and those in this room. But I want you to stop for a moment. I want to think about what God's word has taught us tonight. That God is working in the detour. God is the divine king in the midst of our detour. God is not caught off guard by this. And God already knows how this is going to end. And he's already at work in your life to bring a blessing out of this. If we'd only not lean on our own understanding, but know that his understanding will make our path clear. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, I thank you tonight. Jesus, I thank you for your word, for speaking to our hearts that, that God, you would that you would work right now, your Holy Spirit would, would illuminate in our hearts this word tonight, that God, you would draw all families, all men, all singles, all that are out there, the elderly and the young alike, Lord, to draw close to you in this moment. That God, this word would sink deep in their hearts and that your word would begin to illuminate to them where we have leaned on our own understanding and we have gotten, we've gotten ourselves in a bind. We've gone down a path where we are stuck. But Lord, the hope of your word, the good news of your word, that when we lean on your understanding, that when we, when we trust in you, when we put our full trust, not leaning for a rest, but God totally with abandon, falling into your arms with full trust. Jesus, that you're there, you're faithful, that you won't let us fall. God, you're gonna carry us, you're gonna help us, Lord. So Jesus, as we pray right now, for anyone out there that has not accepted you as their Lord and Savior, or God, they've rejected you, and they know tonight that they want to turn back to you. That, Lord, just like myself and anyone else who has been there, Lord, it's as simple as this. Your grace is sufficient if we'll only receive. So, Lord, I pray right now in that home, in that in that marketplace, in that workplace, in that office, wherever they're at, that, Lord, right now that you'll yield to your spirit and God, they'll pray with me, Lord, in their own words. Lord, this very prayer, Lord, just, Lord, help me. I've sinned. I want to turn from my sin. I want you to be my Lord and Savior. And the scripture, Lord, your word says that if we have faith, if we believe that Jesus is Lord, confess with our heart, then we will be saved. And right now, Lord, I pray for the salvation of all those who are listening. Lord, for the believer who is, who is fighting the fear of the uncertain. Lord, that they would be able to find in your word tonight that, God, there is no detour that you are not in the midst of. That, God, you are not caught off guard, but, Lord, you are clearing the path for us, making it straight. We thank you in Jesus' name. For the families who are in fear of their future, Lord, I would ask, God, that you speak to their hearts. They'd find that, that through you, this may be a detour but it's not the, but God, you can turn this around. That believers will not be detoured, Lord, but understand that your, your divine wisdom, Lord, is readily available. If we just pray and receive, Lord, you'll make our path clear, that your understanding will be our understanding. For those who are sick, that, that they would not be deterred by this illness, but, they, but find faith in Jesus for the healing of their bodies and the healing of their souls. Lord, I pray for the end of this coronavirus that, Lord, right now in Jesus' name as the believers bind together in agreement, the Lord, you would end this, this time, Lord, of sickness. He'd heal bodies. That, God, we are come together believing in your word that it can be finished this moment. But, Lord, if it endures, we still worship and praise you and understand that, God, you're at work to turn this situation that we think is a detour, Lord, into a straight path. 
divine opportunities, Lord, to minister to those that we may never have reached, like Paul on that missionary journey, to lead people to the Lord that we never would have encountered if it had not been for this moment. Lord, we pray for the creativity of the Creator God to be inspiring the church leaders and the church ministry teams, God, that in this time that we would not pull back but push forward, we would not take away but, but add more uh, to your kingdom, Lord, that it would increase and not decrease. That, Lord, your fire of the Holy Spirit would burn in our spirits, that, God, we would not shrink back but, Lord, push forward. That, God, you'd raise up the church this time, Lord, when the communities and the businesses and everything seems to be closing and shutting and going backwards, Lord, we pray the church would be what is moving forward in Jesus' name. Lord, I just pray that if there's anyone young, old, whatever age, Lord, whatever condition they are that right now that they need a healing touch of the body, that, Lord, in any way they signify, whether it's raising their hand, or looking up, standing up where they're at, Lord, right now at home, you bring healing to their body as they have faith and believe, Lord, that you're going to touch them. Jesus, I pray for our leaders, Lord, both in the church, Lord, and in our government, that, God, that they would not let the, the, the visual of this detour, Lord, uh, the closings, the fear, all this uh, uh, direct their leadership, but, God, they would seek you and they would, Lord, listen to your voice and they'd be guided by you, Lord, they'd draw unto you. The Lord, the people of our communities, Lord, would be drawn to you, that the leaders would point them to you, Jesus. God, we pray as we're approaching Easter, Lord, for, for those who are, are ready to minister to their communities that have put much work into being prepared to minister to those who that may be the only time that year that they ever make plans to go and hear your word. And I pray, Lord, that you'll give them, uh, Lord, encouragement. They'll give you, you'll give them wisdom, Lord. You'll give them creativity, that God, that they will continue, Lord, to minister that, Lord, they won't buy into this, that things are, are shutting down. But, God, that your kingdom is not shutting down, but your kingdom is expanding. That these are circumstances. These are temporary, Lord, and your kingdom is eternal. And we are eternal beings that, God, you have called out that we aren't here to, to live according to what is happening from day to day, but to live by your word, Jesus. Let your words guide us. Let your words direct us. God, that the church would be mobilized in prayer. That, Lord, when we wake in the morning before we grab that phone and we see what's going on in the temporary, Lord, we get on our knees and be in the eternal. That, Jesus, before we think that we cannot minister to the sick and the loved ones, that, God, we get on our knees and pray and ask you, Lord, guide us, give us divine appointments, make our path straight, make our understanding clear, give us wisdom, give us creativity, and let us press forward in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for every one of our elderly that are in nursing homes and care facilities, Lord, who are stuck at home. God, who are fearful of what is coming tomorrow or the next week or what their future holds. Lord, I pray that they'd find you in your word and find strength through your word. That they'd find the assurance, Lord, the good news of your word that this is temporary, but Lord, what is eternal is far more precious Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Right now, all over the homes that are out there watching, I want to encourage you, don't let this moment, because you're watching online and you think that church stops when this video stops, it doesn't stop. The church is in your home right now tonight. The presence of God is in your home tonight that when you reach out to them, that God's presence is literally coming to you. The kingdom of heaven is upon you. You just need to call out and cry out to him and say, Lord, make my path straight. Lead your children, your grandchildren. Let them see by example that where your solid rock is that is in Jesus Christ. Let them see where you placed your understanding is in the hands of the almighty God. And I just say to Northwest Arkansas, the church is not closed, nor is it closing. The gates of hell cannot prevail against the church. And what you can count on is God has placed the church here to be a rescue center for your soul. 
we love you. And I am connected. I've been on the phone today with many pastors in the area. They love you. Church bodies all over the place gathering together. Church families praying for one another online and gathering and worshiping. The church is thriving. And this is God's vehicle to bring healing to the nation. And I pray that you'll find trust in him that you may connect with the body of Christ. And in Jesus' name, we pray for your future that is grounded in Jesus Christ. We love you. God bless you. Thank you for joining us tonight at New Song. Go on the website, stay connected, and be watching for the next opportunity for us to worship together online. Good night.